Hi, my name is John Carrier. I'm the B Squad coach at Tartan High School in Oakdale, Minnesota, and we're here today to talk about the four out one in layered motion offense. This may not be the offense we run at Tartan this year, but this is an offense that I am absolutely in love with. I've spent a lot of time running it. I was a, a head assistant coach at St. Thomas Academy last year. This is the offense we ran. When I was the JV coach at St. Paul Coleman Park two years ago, this is the offense we ran. I think it's a very, very good offense, and I think that it's it really helped your team out. So, let's start with the introduction. All right, so why motion offense? A lot of, a lot of coaches ask that. Why motion offense? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, it teaches players how to play the game. So many players don't know how to back cut. They don't know how to read their defender. And this offense helps that happen. You can adjust the motion offense to any defense. Doesn't matter if it's a zone, it's a pressure man, it's a pack man to man. All of these things can be adjusted within the offense. So it becomes a very, very adjustable offense for you. It's also flexible. Based on what you emphasize in a given year, you can make it fit any team you have. So as a high school coach, or even as an AAU coach, one year I'm gonna have players that are different than the next, the motion offense allows you to customize your offense around your talent. So the next thing in the introduction is, is this notion of equal opportunity. Motion is equal opportunity. No, it's, it's really not. But what happens is, as a coach, you need to teach the roles to your players. If you don't teach roles to your players, you're not going to be successful. You're gonna have guys taking shots that shouldn't. Your players need to know who should take the most shots. Your players need to know where their shots are coming from. All right, roles, are dict roles will dictate what a good shot is. There may be some players who, hey, the spot up three pointers are the only shot they're gonna take. There may be some guys who, the layups is what they're gonna get. Off a screen, off a cut, off a post up. The inside shot may be their only shot. And you may have guys who are talented who are gonna shoot everything from you know, pull up threes, the layups. And I don't like pull ups, but you may have a guy or two that can do that. All right, different players are gonna take different shots and that's okay. But they should know where their shots are coming from. What parts of the offense and where in the offense are they gonna get their shots? And you should have that conversation with every single player about these are some ways you look for your shots in the offense. Many times in motion, players get confused. Well, you know, you talk about posting up. And so I wanna post up. But you're a five foot two guard playing in a league where the average point guard is six feet tall. You're not posting anybody up. Or you may have a big guy who says, well, hey, you know, you talk a lot about coming off screens, I wanna shoot threes. You're not, you're not a three point shooter. You've gotta have those conversations and talk about where their shots are coming from. All right, why four out? Because you can go three out, you can go five out. I know Coach Alford out of UCLA has a video on two out motion. But I believe four out is the best. Spacing is the number one reason. When you get a five out motion, it gets a little bit jumbled on the perimeter and it's hard to catch and make that drive. It can be done, and I run motion five out with um, middle school teams that I coach in the spring, just speak for development reasons, but I think that this allows you more spacing and better angles to drive to cut in the screen. Also, it gives you a post presence. All right, it gives you a guy inside to catch the ball. That doesn't mean it's got to be your biggest guy. That, that's a big fallacy of post play. Okay, it's your guy that's going to score inside. And in this motion offense, because our post is on the back side for a lot of it, this, if you have no big players, this is a great place to hide that defender. That guy that really defends well, but boy on offense when he touches the ball, it makes you nervous. That's a great place to hide your defender. Or you can have him in the low post and in the high post. So those are my two big reasons on why we go four out one in motion. So the next thing, so the next thing we should probably talk about is positions. All right, there's four perimeter positions, they're all interchangeable. There's two guards in the slot spot, and there are two wings that are about block level. Now that doesn't mean that when a guy comes down and goes into that guard spot, he's a guard for the entire, uh, entire possession. That's not true. He's gonna pass and cut, he's gonna screen, he's gonna play on the wing, he's gonna be all over. So get your guys out of the habit of saying, I'm a guard, I'm a wing. Because it's just not true. All right, post position, backside block, and either high post. Those are about the spots where you're gonna want your guys. They can flash to the ball. We have a three second area. Any player can stop in the three second area, which is the ball side block, 
post up and look for the ball. So your post can actually come across and post up. Another great thing for your post player is to turn, seal, and hold your guy. All right. So looking at the positions, okay, we've got two guard spots. I would say they go anywhere from the free throw line extended to just inside the uh, lane line. Now, theoretically, we want them at least to step off the lane line because we want to space out the front. But if, we got, if they're moving within their zone, they're going to want to keep that 15 to 18 foot spacing. Now you've got your wings. Okay? Your wings should be from about the, if we have the hash marks here in the block, anywhere from about the last hash mark to in line with the block. So that would be where the wing is located. And again, they can move around. So if your guard ends up coming over here a little bit for some reason, your wing can come up a little bit and maintain a little bit of spacing there. Your post player on the back side has this general area. All right, so he's got ball side high post, ball side or way side high post, back side block. Now that doesn't mean that he's got, he can't go to the ball. Um, last year at St. Thomas Academy, our post player was our leading scorer. And then, you know, so he can flash to the ball, look for the ball, but now he's got three seconds in the three second area. So he's got three seconds in this area, post up, look for the ball, and, and then get away. Okay, now our rules. There's two perimeter rules and there's a post rule. The perimeter rules are fill to the ball, fill the open corner. So if you're on the perimeter, you fill to the ball, if there's an opening. If you're inside the three-point line, you fill the open corner. Post rule, backside, high post, you can flash into the three-second or you can hold on a reversal in the three-second area. So, looking at our rules, if a guy cuts to the basket, all right, so he cuts. He's now inside the three-point line. All right? So what he's got to do is he's got to fill the open corner of the offense. Because he cut inside the three-point line, that triggers an opening in our offense that needs to be filled. How do we fill that? Fill to the ball, fill the open corner. So those are our two rules. All right? Anytime the ball gets passed and changes sides, the post can hold for a three count, or the post gets away, or the post lifts up. So we want to leave the spot open. And again, the reason we want this spot open is the cutting, the driving, the coming off of screens is going to happen, and we want to get the ball in that area. And if you leave your post player there, it's going to clog it up. All right, little note on post play. I've kind of touched on a few things with this already. Coaches. Think backside post diminishes post presence. I've heard that a lot in talking to other coaches. The truth is a ball side post is going to clog up what you're trying to do. It's going to get in the way of your offense. Your guards are going to cut into a post. Your guards are going to drive into a post. All right, so what, what it does is it opens up, the, uh, opens up the offense to have the post away. And like I said last year, our post was our leading scorer. Why? Because we would drive the ball in addition to him. He was on the back side to get offensive rebounds. Because when we swung the ball, he would turn, get big post up, and we'd get him the ball. When his guy wasn't fell asleep, he would flash across the lane and get the ball. You know, we would get the ball off a cut, his guy would come over to help, and we would dish it to him. I feel that putting your post on the back side makes them far more effective because they're not getting all the, you don't have to have all the defensive attention. Their guy falls asleep, we get an easy basket for our post. Okay? And you've got to vary your role based on your post skills as well. How often they flash, how often they hold, how often they're in that three second. If your guy just can't score and he's just there for defense, great. Tell him backside, backside, backside. He rebounds, we dump off balls to him once in a while. He'll get his points, especially if he runs the floor, does things the right way. All right? So, if he can shoot it, he can handle it a little bit, put him in a high post. Two years ago on the JV team that I coached, we had a guy that was very, very quick, and he could shoot the 15-foot jumper. 
So he catching the high post. If they didn't guard him, he'd shoot. If they guard him, he shot fake and go to the rim. And it became very effective for us. Plus, he was a very good passer. So he'd catch the pass. He'd hit cutters. He'd dribble off people. There were all kinds of things he could do. All right? So, again, if you, if you steal him back to the basket, he's going to come to the ball a little bit more. But those are, those are the things that you're going to do with your post player. All right, layered teaching. This may be the most important piece of the offense. So many coaches are going to go in and try to give everybody everything right away. While you can pass, you can stream. Do players get overloaded? Heck, as coaches, I think we get overloaded. We look at it and we say, oh my God, there's 500 different, I, we can't do all this. Well, of course you can if you're throwing it all in at once. But if you teach it in layers, it's going to be easier to understand, all right? It breaks it into easy sections, small pieces to help you learn, okay? It allows players to master every part of the offense. It allows you to build the offense over time. It's very effective if you're in a program, in a youth program, or in a high school program, or better yet, both, where the kids from kindergarten through senior year are going to learn the exact same offense, and every year we're adding a piece, so by the time they get to be sophomores or juniors, they know a very complex offense very, very well. It also allows you to diagnose where the problem is. A lot of times you say, okay, you know, uh, you know we're not passing and cutting. We're passing and banana cutting. Uh, we're going to go back and we're going to practice that first piece of the offense again. And the guys are going to know that. We're going to go back and say, hey, look, guys, we're going to go back over layer one. What are the points of layer one? They'll tell you. You'll go from there. So it makes it an easy diagnosis. All right? The most important rule, though, if they do not understand the layer, don't move on because of time. This takes time, all right? So if they, if they haven't mastered it, if they can't just do it in a game, okay? You need, you need to keep teaching, you need to keep drilling. You know, once again, they've mastered it when they're doing it in game and practice situations without having to be retaught every day, without having to rethink about it. They're just doing it. That's how you know. All right, so these are my layers. Uh, these are the layers we're gonna go over today. So based on personality, you, personnel and personality, your personality as a coach and your personality players, rearrange them how you want. You may have athletic guys every year, you want to get to the rim, and you may take the attack dribble and put it one. This is not a magic order. This is just what I believe. Um, I believe pass and cut first because it really works on getting the ball side, top side, and reversing the ball. Screening takes a little bit longer for the action to play out, so you got to hold that ball an extra second. But it's, so if you teach screening first, guys are going to hold the ball a little bit longer. We want our guys to swing it. So we go with passing cut first. But again, this isn't magic. Uh, this is not you know, gospel here. This is just what I believe. So, okay, what the offense is and isn't. This offense is a number of different reads that are taught to players. Okay, players learn the game through these reads. So this is not, this is not a bunch of sets we're gonna call. Hey, we're gonna layer one, call layer one. Your point guard's not gonna come up and say, hey, we're running four. That's not what this is. This is we're gonna teach the reads of motion in small pieces, which are easy to break down and digest. All right, emphasis in the motion offense. There's four real things we wanna do here, all right? And you know, last year, being the varsity assistant, um, we wrote these on the board every day before games. And my guy, the guys got tired of it. Our guys were really tired of it. But it's what we need to do. We need to get paint touches. We need to get the ball inside the paint. We need to get the ball in there to make the defense collapse and do some other things. I was at a clinic the other day, and I was listening to um, one of the assistant coaches at University of Minnesota Duluth. And they actually tracked it. When they got a paint touch, their shooting percentage doubled during the year based on getting a paint touch versus not. That's huge. And so I, uh, that's the number one thing we gotta do. We gotta get the ball in the paint. And this offense, the way we teach it, is designed to get the ball in the paint. Jump shooting's great, but you can't live and die by the jumper. You gotta have the concrete substance of getting the ball in the paint. We also wanna swing the ball, side top side. All right, that's a, that's a term we use a lot. It can't just go guard to guard. It's gotta go from the wing, across, back to the opposite wing. When the corners are where you're going to get a lot of your action, you're going to get a lot of good cuts, you're going to get a lot of good post-entry angles, you got to get the ball to the wings. All right, quick decisions and passes. Shoot it, drive it, or move it. All right, I put pass here, but shoot it, drive it, or move it. And you got to move hard. you got to pass and cut hard. Everything you got to do is hard. you got to sprint to fill. you got to sprint your cuts. you got to you know, 
go hard to the rim. There is no, we're just going to kind of hang out in this offense. We've got to do everything hard. So, before we move on to the layers of the offense, let's go on the court and let's take a minute to look at the spacing and the rules of the offense. Alright, here we are on the court to talk about spacing and the three general offense rules. So as you can see, as we talked about, we've got two guards, we've got two wings in the corner, and we've got a post away from the ball. Remember that our rules are on the perimeter, fill to the ball, fill the open corner. So we'll step inside. So as soon as the perimeter player goes inside the three-four line, the other player is still towards the ball, and the other player fills the open corner. So that's our two perimeter rules. Our post rules are our post stays away from the ball unless they flash to the ball and hold for three seconds. So your post can flash across, post up, and hold for a three count, but once three seconds is over, they have to go back and get away. So that is our basic rules and our basic setup for the four out one in. Cut. Let's talk about our first layer, the first piece of the offense we're going to teach is the passing cut. I think it's the backbone of any good motion, and I also think that it's important for players to understand this one in order to swing the ball, get a lot of really quick movement. A lot of times I think it's very important to take one or two reversals where you're just passing cut. Sometimes we start the offense that way because it gets everybody moving. So that's why we teach this layer first. All right, so uh, for, that's the first thing we teach. Uh, players need to read their defender on this. If they make a pass and the guy jumps to the ball to deny, it's a straight cut to the basket. If they make the pass and the player sags off, now we're going to walk them one or two steps away, we're going to come back, and we're going to try to front cut them to the rim. All right? Sprint until you get onto the backboard. It's important as coaches that we teach for slippage. I'm going to be honest. If, I tell, if we tell guys cut to the rim, they're going to kind of step away from the rim be just because it's the way it is. So if we tell them to cut under the backboard in a game when the lights turn on and everybody's excited, they're probably going to make the rim because they're going to think about backboard. So you got to teach for slippage here. All right. Another thing to add, you can also, we didn't show it on the video that's coming up next, you can post up for two or three seconds, especially your bigger, more athletic guards or a guy with a mismatch, pass, basket cut, get to the front of the rim, turn around, post up, in that three second zone, look for the ball. So that's also an option. If ball changes sides of the floor, post needs to change sides of the floor. In the video that we're going to show next, the post, um, they, the, the team we're working with is a motion offense team, but they leave their post on one side. So that was what he was used to. So throughout the video, I coached him to try to get him to change sides. But post should be changing sides as the ball changes sides. Perimeter players follow the rules. Okay, fill to the ball, fill the open corner. Other players in the perimeter fill towards the ball when a pass and cut is made, the cutter fills the open corner. So let's take a look at it. If this guy makes the pass, he is going to cut. And again, he's going to cut to the front of the rim and under the backboard. All right? Now, that creates this opening. And with that opening, the wing will fill to the ball. And after he's done with the cut, the guy will cut from the guard spot will fill to the open corner. While that's happening, the post player, because the ball changes sides of the floor, is going to loop around to the back side. Now, sometimes it's a read for your guard. If the post player's defender is standing here, which they may, your, gut, your cutter is going to have to cut a little bit more to the front of the rim, or uh, to the ball side of the rim. And they may even cut almost to the block if they have to with that help defense. Because what we're looking for is, we're looking obviously for a layup. But if the pass gets made to the inside and hits the cutter, the post is on the other side, hits the cutter, it should either be a layup or they take an attack and they throw it across to the post. So that's what we're looking for. So this is what it would look like live. Guard makes a pass, cuts through, fill the ball, fill the open corner, same thing again. Okay. Makes the pass. Oh yeah, the post change sides of the floor. My bad, post change sides. 
Um, guard cuts. The other two guys fill to the ball. And the cutter fills the open corner. Now, the one that's a little bit different is the wing to guard pass. All right? But again, it's an easy one to teach, but it's one you got to kind of point out to the guys or the girls. Okay, I make a cut. Now, what's my open corner? Well, they're not filling to the ball because they have nowhere to fill to, so the wing's got to come, and the wing's got to fill back out after the wing to guard pass. So I think that's important to make sure you point out to your guys. All right, let's go ahead. We'll go down and we'll hit it on the court. Alright, so this is layer one, the first piece of the offense, which is pass and cut. So Jack, real quick. So any time the player makes a pass, they pass. Their first one is to cut to the basket. Couple of things here. As we talk about teaching for slippage, we want to have our guys, we want to train our guys to cut all the way to the backboard. Because in a game, they'll probably cut to the front of the room when we want them to. And again, in our rules, the guy fills the wall, we fill the open corner. Okay? Post on the stage on the back side. Yes, go ahead on the do pass and cut. Go. Okay, so our next layer is pass to the post and cut. Because we don't want to pass to the post and stand because now it becomes easy to double off the ball to help do some other things. So we want people to move when we make a pass to the post. So we don't, we don't call it a separate layer, but we call it a layer within a layer because it's still pass and cut, but, the, but it looks a little bit different because it's a pass to the post. So, passing to the post is the same rule. We pass and cut. High post entry is just a regular basket cut, you cut to the rim. If you feed the low post, whether it's a guard or somebody else, we do what's called a Laker cut. You cut to the elbow, the ball side elbow, back side block, and out, and everybody rotates around. Okay, on the cut, other players fill towards the ball. So here's what it'll look like. All right, so we've got the ball. Let's say our post flashes to the high post. It gets the pass. We treat this situation as a regular pass and cut. So he's just going to cut to the basket. And what we tell our guys for movement's sake is fill opposite. So he's going to fill towards the ball. He's going to fill towards the ball. He's going to continue out and fill out to the wing. Now, if we go the other way. And let's say, for the sake of discussion, Wing's got the ball, the post makes a flash across, and gets the pass. All right? Wing makes the, or the post, cuts across, and gets the pass. Now we want our Laker cut. The wing cuts up to the elbow, and again, what we're doing is we're trying to pull our defender away. Because if he just goes to double, this becomes a layup for us. All right, but we don't want to cut into the post. We don't want to try to cut under the post. I know some teams do that. Uh, I find the spacing is very hard there. So what we do is we go to the elbow, backside block and out. Everybody else fills to the ball. And as you can see, the original cutter filled the open corner. So again, I, I can't stress it enough. The rules are important. Fill to the ball, fill the open corner. It takes care of every single situation you're ever going to have. Even if players don't know layer, fill the ball, fill the open corner is huge. So those are our two basic, those are our two basic post feed actions. So we'll look at it kind of in a live ball. Post pops, gets the ball, cuts through, fill the ball, fill the open corner. All right, low post. Post entry, 
Starts his Laker cup. Fill the ball. Fill the open corner. Okay, so he finishes his Laker cut, fills the open quarter, we're back in our situation. The other thing about doing it this way, if the help comes from behind, now he's got an angle here. If the help comes from this guy, he's got an angle there. Everybody rotating one spot gives the post better vision and it also messes with the help if they double on that, that their guy isn't where they thought they were, where they remember, the guy's moved now, so now they've got to adjust to that on their closeout. One other nuance you can add out of the high post pass and cut action is the idea of the dribble over and then either the handoff or the back cut. Now this may be something you don't teach, this may be something you do. I've taught it in the past, I think it works really well. So he passes the ball, makes his cut, fill over, so fill the ball, fill the open corner, and now the post has got to get rid of the ball. Alright, so there's several things they could do All right, with the dribble over. You can just have him dribble over handoff, dribble over back cut. Um, he can just pass it out. But what I like is, especially at the wing, dribble at him, take one or two hard dribbles. He comes up and he reads it. If his guy goes under it, take the handoff, get to the rim. If the guy plays on the top of it, we back cut it, and then we pass out from there. So this guy will rotate over, probably get the kick out from there. So that's one more thing you can add to your post pass and cut layer to add an extra dimension and to really utilize a skilled post. If you're lucky enough to have a post player who can dribble pass and shoot, you want them in the high post more and you want to be able to use them. Alright, before we move on to the next layer, let's go down on the court and we'll take a look how this looks live. Alright, so now we're going to talk about layer 1A, which is our post pass and cut. So what happens when you pass the ball to the post? Once again, we've got a couple of boxes. Set the set up the high post. If you catch it in the, on the elbow, catch it. It's just a regular cut to the basket. Under, under the back first. You stay. Fill the ball. Fill the open corner. Now throw it over there. No, not a little post. If we catch it in the post, it's again, it's what's called a Laker cut. Our guy cuts to the elbow. So the second thing after passing cut we really want to teach our players is to back cut denial. Anytime they're denied, we need to back cut. So anytime a player is being denied outside the three-point line, it's back cut. We need to get a go-go mentality. Get open or get out. So if you're not open right away, get out. We want to eliminate the Texas two-step. All right, we want to. Once you get inside the line, inside the three-point line, you got to finish your cut. No V cuts, no L cuts. And I know some coaches say, whoa, that's kind of sacrilege. But here's the deal. If I've got a V cut or L cut to get open, I'm too denied. I need to get out for the sake of the offense and let's bring somebody else up and get them the ball. Too many players V cut three, four, five times and now what happens is the passer panics. Passer throws a bad pass because they don't want a five second call turnover. All right? So in those turnovers where the guy's cutting back and forth, back and forth, that's not the cutter's fault, that's not the passer's fault, it's actually our fault as coaches for not teaching guys just go, go, get open or get out. Because once you back cut a team three, four, five times, they're going to stop denying you. Once you back cut and get a couple of layups, they're going to leave you alone on the perimeter. Alright? Once inside, you got to adhere to rule number two, fill the open corner. So, this is what it looks like. Okay, guards being denied. Alright? Now let him get the ball. Take a step towards the ball to set it up. 
And that's different. You don't want to go up because eventually they're going to leave you alone and then you're just going to catch the ball out here. What I found to be effective is take a hard step at the ball. They're, that's really going to sell that defender on coming up, getting into denial, back cut to the front of the rim, or not to the front of the rim, excuse me, the backboard, so I even forget. Now the next thing happens. Fill the ball, fill the open corner. What we're looking for is, in most defenses, this player's guy is going to be in the lane in the help. So what happens is, this pass ends up being wide open. So when we make that pass, we're right into our offense. All right, so we make the pass to the cutter. The guy that fills up gets the pass. Now this guy just does whatever, basket cuts, screens if we've got it in, whatever, you know, whatever part of the offense we've got in, whatever part of the offense they want to do. We keep running our offense. This is not a call, this is not a, you know, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna run this play. This is, anytime you overplay, go, go, get open or get out. So, again, what it should look like. Guys denied, takes a step to the ball, cuts under the rim, fill the ball, fill the open corner, hopefully we get the pass, he cuts, he fills, post goes away, fill out, and we're running the offense. We're passing, we're cutting, we're passing, we're cutting. Now all of a sudden, wing gets denied, guy's got the ball, wing's denied, what's the wing gonna do? Back cut the pressure. All right, not there, fill out, we look to go the other way, we cut, we just keep running the offense, but the back cut becomes a part of the offense. All right, before we go on to the next layer, let's go out and look at this on the floor. All right, now we're going to talk about layer two, which is back cut the, back cut the pressure. So what would happen is, if Michael was over the play, and Richardson can't catch the ball, When he comes to the basket, we go to our room. Fill the ball, let the spring, fill the open corner. All right, what we're looking to avoid is this. All right, guys, switch. What we're looking to avoid is what I like to call the Texas two-step. I want you to kind of get out here. Okay? Where the guy comes in and he cuts back out, cuts in and cuts back out. All right. We're looking to avoid that. What, our, what we teach is go, go, and open or get out. So if you're not open, you get out. You immediately back up, you go to the basket. All right? The other thing that we need to talk about with this is the idea of teach your guys once you're inside the three-point line, you can't come back up. Once you cross the three-point line, you now have to fill the open corner. You cannot come back up. So that's where fill the ball, fill the open corner comes in. All right, well, You know, it basically one of the best things I did as a motion coach was spent a lot of time studying dribble drive. I love dribble drive. It's why we space the wings lower, why we space the guards wider, and why we put the post on the back side. I think it's a little bit simplistic of an offense, um, especially if you don't have the right personnel, which is why I like to have the offense like we do with cutting, screening, and dribble drive. But we, I've changed the name recently, in the last couple of weeks actually, to attack dribble because I think it's more, it paints a better picture of what we're trying to do. So many teams you tell a guy to drive and kick while they're gonna just kind of poke their way into a hole nice and slow and then throw the ball. We're not looking for that, we're looking to attack the rack when we put the ball on the floor. Which again, is why Vance Wahlberg at first named the offense Asa. Attack, attack, skip, attack, attack. He wanted that attack in there, so this is why we call this the attack dribble. Anytime a player uses an attack dribble. Now, a lot of coaches are going to hate this layer because they're going to say, oh, it's just too much dribbling. Well, but here's what I'm going to tell you. If you don't teach your guys how and when to dribble, you're going to get over dribbling like it or not because they're not going to know what else to do. 
What we do with our guys, and if I ever put out a motion video on teaching this, I'll elaborate on this a little bit more, but what we show our guys is there's only certain times where you dribble. You dribble going to the rim. Maybe changing a passing angle, but nine out of 10 times you're dribbling to get to the rim. So if you can't, you catch it, can't get to the rim, I'm gonna pass it now. I'm not gonna catch it and dribble to dribble, I know what I'm supposed to do. I look to drive, look to shoot, look to drive, get rid of it, okay? So you drive it, pass, drive, shoot it, drive it, move it. Remember those three, shoot it, drive it, move it. Tell guys that all the time. And the other thing is this, in your offense you need to eliminate the triple threat stuff, the catch, I'm gonna shot fake, jab fake a guy for five, no. Either you catch it and go, you catch it and shoot, or you catch it and get rid of it. All right? You may catch it, jab, and go right away, but it's not a, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to look at my guy like I'm Kobe Bryant. Because I don't know about you, but I don't know any Kobe Bryant's on, my, on the teams I've coached. So you can't let a guy just catch it in jab and do everything else. It's an attack. I'm catching, I'm going to the rim. So attack dribble, again, the purpose is a straight line drive to the rim. It's not dribbling at a guy on the perimeter. It's not dribbling over. We don't do dribble over in this because what ends up happening is guys just dribble to dribble. You're dribbling for a purpose, and that purpose is to get a layup, all right? So there, there's a saying we use. We like threes, we love layups, all right? We like threes, we love layups. We don't like the mid-range. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to the rim, all right? Now, the, the key to this is the movement of the other players. The other players in the direction being dribbled at cut towards the basketball. So if the guard on the left side drives right, the right side guard and the right side wing both fill towards the ball, okay? The player next to the drive, so if the, if the guard on the left side goes right and he goes middle, the right side guard is going to fill behind, all right? But the next player over must make a read. If his defender helps up and they turn their back to you, you back cut. If they help across and they keep you in vision, then you fill behind. We've found that we get a lot of layups off of this action. All right, when the, when the defender steps up to help and overcommits, it's an easy dump off for a layup many, many times. On a kick out, we follow the perimeter rules. Fill the ball, fill the open corner. So the driver fills the open corner. And before you put this layer in, those guys should understand that. If I drive to the basket and pass it out, I'm filling the open corner. You want to point that out, I think, before you even teach this layer, when you're just teaching the basic rules. All right, so here's how this will look. We've got a guard here, and I'm gonna go over all the driving spots just so you can see, okay? If the guard decides that they're going to drive to the middle, okay, again, they're trying to go here. They're not driving this way just to dribble the basketball, and they sure as heck aren't dribbling this way. No, we're not doing those. And I think it's important from day one to explain that to your players. All right, so the guy makes a drive. He's going to the right. The players on the right are going to fill towards the ball. And eventually, this guy on the corner of the wing will sort of stop here and then finish his cut once the drive is made. Because what we're looking for is we're looking for kickout angles. And again, that's why part of the reason I say the guard spot ends free throw line extended. What we're looking at is we're looking for a couple of things here. We're looking for, first we're looking for a layup. Second of all, and when this guy, there's a magical line in the middle of the floor. When the driver passes that line, if they do, so they're driving to the rim, as soon as they pass that line, the post player needs to relocate, because so they need to be on the backside. They're gonna swing under and they're gonna relocate. Now here's what's gonna happen. Put your post defender in a bad spot. If he wants to help and stop a layup, we're going to get a layup off this, off this um, replacement. If he goes with the guy, now it's easy. Now the guy's got a shot to get to the rim. So that's part of the reason, again, post on the backside opens up your driving lanes. So what we're looking at every time is we're looking for a layup first, we're looking for a post dump in, and then we're looking for that kick out three. So if the help comes from this guy, his defender here, his defender sinks into help, now we've got easy pass for a shot. All right, now, if this guy passes out, where does he go? Well, we've got this guy who's filled to the guard spot. This guy's filled that guard spot, and that wing's filled. So he fills the open corner. And this guy, when he catches it here, if he doesn't shoot it, 
may want to dribble up and kind of set on the floor. And, that, and that's more up to you as a coach. But that's a look from the guard spot. Now, if the guard decides to go baseline, all right, so the guard takes, I love this drive. The guy takes this guy here. And again, it's not over here, it's not over here, it's to the rim. Guy takes to the rim, this guy reads his defender. This guy's going to rotate up. All right, so he's going to rotate up, and we're going to look for the kick back here. If it's not there, we look to kick out, look to kick out, look to dump to the post. The other piece of this, again, as I'm talking about, is I'm talking about the read. If this is the defender, and the defender helps up, steps up to help, and this is a common occurrence, all right? This is a common occurrence. He steps up, we're going to go back door, we're going to hit him with the pass. Let me fix one thing here. So this guy, when the help comes, will jump stop here and will throw a pass in for the layup. All right, so it's going to be open. We get a lot of those that play. And then what will happen is the post guy helps, it's a quick dump across. If the, if the guy drops it, helps to help him like they should, then it's a skip to the corner. So you've got options out of it. But we really, again, paint touches. We're getting the ball in the paint, good things are happening. Now, on the other hand, with this defender, the wing defender, if the guy drives, Cut that piece. All right, now let's look at the wing defender here. If the, if the guard drives hard to the rim and he helps across, that's when we fill behind. So he comes up and we either look for him. If you can get a shot there, you get a shot, but we also look for the kickback. He's going to kick the ball out. And now what you end up with is you end up with a guy in the perimeter for a shot, a second drive if they want, or they can pass and basket cut. So you can get a lot of options out of that kickback play. Now let's look at the wing drive really quickly. If the wing goes baseline, and you know you want to keep it, the thing to teach you guys is stay above the block. If you get below the block, you got problems. But if your guy, if your if your wing catches it a little bit, a little bit higher, and they want to go baseline, that's okay. So your wing goes baseline to get to the rim. Here's what we do. The only different thing we do is we move the post and we relocate him up a little bit, and we do that for one reason. A, it's an easy layup at the front of the rim. But B, if we have two guys on the baseline, then what we're losing is we're losing the kick across. And because he's going left, he's going baseline, he's not dribbling towards anybody, nobody rotates except for the post. So we're looking for this, we're looking for that, and we're looking obviously for a layup. So that's if the post goes baseline. Or if the wing goes baseline, excuse me, if the wing goes baseline. If the wing decides to go middle, so if the wing goes middle, Again, he's not going middle to get to the elbow. He's going middle to get to the basket. This guy makes the read. If his defender helps up, we back cut. If his defender helps across and tries to keep him in line, so he helps across and tries to keep him in line, we fill behind the dribbler. This guy fills behind the dribbler. This guy fills behind him, and we all rotate one spot over. So then what we end up with is hopefully a layup. We can end with a post dump off. We can end with a kick out here. Or we can end up with a kick back. We can end up with a kick out here. So you've got the options coming off the dribble. All right, so those are the four. Now one other thing I want to talk about really quickly is this backside. What we really want to talk about is backside win. All right, 
They become a very important piece of this offense if you do it right. And this is the classic one where it happens. Guard drives. Okay. He fills up. He fills up. Post goes across. Now, our rule is go, go. If you're overplay, get out. Get open or get out. So if there's a defender who denies this guy and denies this pass, it's an automatic back cut because he's being overplayed. Against aggressive teams, you're going to get this action a lot, and it's one you're going to want to point out to your players. All right, now that we've seen this layer of the offense, let's go look at it on the floor. And right, now we're going to go over layer three, which is our dribble drive or our drive and kick layer. This is not a separate offense. This is what we do when the ball gets put on the floor. So it may be two or three pass, cut, pass, cut, and then a guy has an opening to drive. And this is how we handle the drive in our offense. The player that drives dictates the rotation. So if he goes to the right, everybody on the right goes the opposite way of the drive. All right, so he kicks it up again. Our rule is to fill the corner. So he would fill the open corner. If the guard decides to go left, Everybody rotates one spot to the left. And notice as he crosses the midline, come back over here, sir. Everybody come back. Now I want you to come slow motion. As he crosses the midline, the post is going to loop under the outside of the block. Go. Okay? So now that's what we have. One of the other Coach, you're all right. Thank you. 
So you want your back to the rim because that's where we want our cutter to go. Cutter, take him down a half a step, set it up, come off it, curl hard. Now again, screener pops back. We do that to create separation, open space. And again, the rules. Fill the open corner. Screener fills back to the open, or the cutter fills back to the open corner. All right, now, if he gets the ball and he makes a pass, he does not have to screen. Again, I, I don't want guys to get in the habit of, okay, we're running the screening layer, so we're just gonna screen everybody. He can cut, maybe this guy runs a dribble drive action, but again, that's, that's what the offense is. It's pass, cut, maybe pass, screen, but you gotta mix it up. If you have a pass from guard to wing, it's the same idea. Okay, guard passes to the wing, he decides he wants to screen. A lot of times we screen when the defender isn't gonna let us cut. Okay, they're, you know, they're sagging off, they're in front. Anyway, his defenders, in, this guy's defender is in the help, what are we gonna do? We're gonna find a way to get him open. And a lot of times that's what you just tell you guys. Find a way to get him open. So I'm gonna cut down, I'm gonna kinda set it almost like this. Again, I know you want back where you wanna go, but in this situation it's gonna be hard. This guy takes this guy down, curls hard off the screen, and again, our rules always work. Pop back, there's an open spot here, fill to the ball, this guy makes the cut all the way under the backboard, again, you gotta keep teaching that, fill the open corner. So that's, that's our screening game. That's what our screening is gonna look like when we start, when we start teaching the curl cuts. Let's go look at it on the floor. shortcutting it and then going and setting the screen. It's still a basket cut. Alright? The other thing is they should a, a great thing to do is to back screen the next passer. So if a guard throws it to the other guard and cuts and in the meantime that guard throws it to the wing, back screening the passer is a great option 
in this, uh, in this look. And then when the screener sets the back screen, they step out, which is the one caveat to the fill the ball, fill the open court rule. Screeners are exempt from that rule. All right, so here's what it would look like. Guard makes a pass. Guy at the guard spot makes a pass. Guy at the guard spot basket cuts. All right. Now again, our rules, fill to the ball, fill the open quarter. So he fills to the ball as, he, as, the, as the guard's cutting the basket. Now the guard's got options. He can step up and back screen this guy, back screen that guy, or if as he's cutting, this guy makes a pass to the corner, now he can come step out and back screen the passer. He comes off it, he steps out, Post gets away again. That's why we get the post away. If he's here, none of this action's any good because we're cutting into a post. So as soon as the ball changes side, the post gets away. Anyhow, set the back screen, pop out, we're in the offense. If he passes back to this guy, he'll cut. He can back screen or he can just cut. All right, let's see how it would look kind of as, as this version. All right, I pass, I cut. As I cut, these guys are filling. I may go set a back screen for this guy here. I'll pop out. He'll fill the open quarter. Maybe the guy, you know, maybe the wing passes to the filling guy here, who swings the ball. So as he makes his cut, he's got enough time to step out, set the back screen for him. He pops out, fills the open quarter. He may drive the ball this way. He may drive the ball. Now we're into the driving piece. Or he may pass the ball. We're into passing cut. Whatever it is. So. Let's go look at this layer out on the floor. Alright, now we got layer five, which is our pass, basket cut, and back screen your way out layer. What will happen is anytime you pass a cut and you teach this layer, you've got the option to back screen your way out now instead of filling the open corner. That's the only time you wouldn't fill the open corner is when you back screen. So we're gonna watch you guys run, pass and cut. And what these guys are very good at, because they're well taught, is they're very good at screening the next basket. So if you get to the basket, and the guy makes a pass that you pass, the great option is to back screen that guy. His defender isn't as ready, it's a good passing angle. It doesn't mean that's the only person you back screen, but that's a great option. Make sure you're calling the names, you're setting the screens, you got a nice wide base, your feet are set, all the things that go into proper screening. So that is our pass, basket cut, and back screen layer. Our next layer is a layer within a layer, which is layer 5A, and it's our post back screening actions, our post screening on the back side. Cut that. All right, so this is a sub layer of layer 5. This is our post screening actions on the back side. I think it's important to get your post involved in screening and then shaping to the ball. So I'm going to show you several things we do with our post on the back side. All right, several actions you can do. Back screen and shape. Post sets up a back screen on one of the two backside guys, backside wing, backside guard, and then shapes to the ball. A great one is to set that backside elbow or backside screen on the elbow, the guard comes off it, and then he cuts to the ball. So the guard is kind of cut to the back side of the rim, the post cuts to the front. That's one of my favorite ones to do. Um, you can do a back screen and a flare screen. This is especially good with the wing. Ball gets swung, step across the lane, set almost like a flex screen, turn around, get him for a flare, and then shape to the ball. And you can go back screen, back screen. Now the post will call this. The post will set a back screen for one of the perimeter players on the back side, and then that perimeter player will cut to the rim and turn, turn around and re-back screen the post into the post on the ball side. It's a great way to get your post into the ball side. So as you can see, once you introduce this layer, your post becomes a lot more active now. This is how to look on the floor now. A couple of reminders. This is happening while the offense is going on. So he may pass to him, run a basket cut, and we're still doing these backside actions. This isn't something that we just hold the ball and wait for this to happen. Now, if, you're, if somebody catches the ball and they see a screen on the back side, they may want to hold on a second, but it's not something that we're like we're calling out or we're specifically holding the ball and waiting to happen. This is just something that happens on the back side. So, we'll go through a few of these. One of my favorites is the back screen shape. 
So the post would come up, and again, it's about finding the guy's defender, setting it up, sets the back screen, he cuts to the rim, shape to the ball, post up, it's especially effective. When the pass is made to the wing, he comes off, we look in there, he sees that the post is there, and that's one of the reads you gotta, you gotta teach your guys. When somebody's in the three second zone, we just cut to the back side of the rim and we fill up. So that would be, that would be one of the actions. Another action may be like a screen, a back screen flare screen. So ball gets reversed. He's going to the back side of the basket anyway. We almost set a flex screen. So he'll sprint across, find the defender, screen the defender, come off the screen. We don't have anything. Now what he'll do is he'll turn around, flare the guy right back out to the open corner. You can, it can be as simple as when this guy passes the ball, Okay, so the guard passes the ball, post relocates, and this is what we don't have on the, on the beginning, but this is another thing your post can do. Okay, he makes the cut, he fills up, the post can always flare screen the guy to the corner, because he's filling the corner anyway. So set the flare screen, flare him out to the corner, shape to the ball. Now we've got a flare screen action, we've got a shape to the ball. You can do that with your post player. And then I'll also show you back screen, back screen. So back screen, back screen might look like this. Post player sets a back screen for the guard. Guard cuts to the rim, turns around, sets a back screen for the post. Boom, boom, we look to get the post the ball inside, especially if pass is being made to the wing. Now, there's a lot of different things you can do with that. Um, I think you know these are some of the basic things that I like to do on the back side that I think are important. So let's go look at those out on the floor. Alright, this is layer 5A, which is part of layer 5, and it's our post screening actions that can happen on the back side of the ball. So, a couple of things we can do. We can do a back screen and a flare screen, or a back screen and a back screen. So here we have back screen and a flare screen. Set the back screen. And he comes off the back screen. Our guy comes to the ball for our rules. Set the flare for him. Okay, we flare screen it, and then our big guy off the screen shakes through the wall. This is a great action to get your big guy the ball. It's definitely going to want to catch him more. You're going to want to shake right to the front of the rim. Alright? There's also the back screen, folks. Set a back screen, flare screen. We already done it. Set a back screen, flare screen here. Okay, so we can also a back screen, flare screen for the Go ahead. We can cut off it. Nothing there. You're going to flare it back out. You're going to step the ball. Go. Okay? This is very effective. Step on this side. This is very effective when it works almost like a flex screen. Put the ball there. Set your flex screen. Set your screen. And then flare it off. So back screen, flare screen. Alright, so it's that option.
which is our passive screen action where we introduce the flare screen to the offense. So, the player passes the ball and goes to set a screen. It's important to note that our screeners are going to set up to set a curl screen every single time. Now, the cutter is going to come off the screen and they're going to look for their defender. They're going to see, okay, the defender's in the lane. Not chasing me, not going over the top. They're standing in the lane waiting for me. And what they're going to do is they're actually going to grab the, the screener by the shoulders, say flare, and turn the shoulders. You may want to just grab one shoulder and turn, shut the door. You may want to actually grab two and twist them. But what they're going to do is when the screener feels himself getting twisted, he's then going to pin inside and try to find the guy and pin him in when we flare out. On the flare out, the guy's going to go back to where he came from, and then the screener's going to pop out. All right? and we pop out to keep the spacing. So the flare screener, we used to do it where the, when we flare screen, the screener would slip to the basket, but what the problem becomes is then you flare out, then you've got to fill up, then the guy, it's, just, it's, it's harder, and it's easier to have a rule that the, the screener will pop. Now, maybe you decide you want your screener to slip to the basket, I have no problem with that, I think that's great, and you know, who knows, three or four years from now, I may change my philosophy on that as well. Nothing is ever set in stone. This is how the flare screen would look from a number of different positions, all right? Guard makes a pass to the other guard. Comes down just like you would normally, sets that look of a curl screen. The cutter comes off the curl, sees that his defender has sunk in the lane, turns the shoulders, pops back out. This guy can either dive to the rim and then fill out or simply pop out. That's how it would look. If if the guard passes to the wing, okay, hold on. Edit that out. If the guard passes to the wing, it's the same look. He's going to take a couple of steps, set up that curl screen. The cutter's going to come off it. You're going to see the guy waiting for him. You're going to turn the shoulders, flare back. The screen is either going to dive or pop. So that's our two different looks out of the flare screen. Now let's go look at that on the floor. All right, so when you run a lot of curl screens, and you drive and kick and pass and cut, teams are going to start sagging off of you, which is why we introduce the next layer, which is our flare screen. So, you're saying pass the ball across, and he goes to set a screen, and the defender might be falling on the in the lane. What, what's going to happen is the cutter's going to turn the screener, turn, say flare, and he's going to flare out when he wants to skip the ball.
turns the shoulders down, so now the guy is facing the baseline, and the cutter pops out to where the screener came from. So this is what it would look like. Make the pass, set the screen like you're going to set a curl screen. The defender point is below it, cutter sees it, changes the shoulders, pops out, screener can either separate, fill the corner, which I personally like, or you can, to keep the rules similar, you can just have them pop out. But that, that's the basics of it. That's pretty much the, uh, that's pretty much the basics. We're just going to pin down on that. So, here's what it would look like. Pass gets made. Go to set the screen. He comes off the screen, realizes that the defender is playing under him. So he actually, again, turns the shoulders. So the guy is now screening down, pops out, fill out, or what you get, I like, fill to the basket, and then fill out to the corner. Okay? On a guard to a wing pass, and again, he would get to the backside, obviously. Uh, guard to wing pass, same thing. First, I'm gonna come and set the screen. Well, I'm gonna set up, you know, I'm gonna set that curl cut. Guy's gonna come up to it. See the guy under playing under the screen, going to switch the shoulders, and then it's going to pop out, and then this guy can either separate and fill, well he'll separate and then fill back out. Because again, the popper, or the screener always pops. Now, if you get in a situation again, fill the ball, fill the open corner. This guy separates, this guy decides to come up, not a big deal, he'll fill the open corner, we'll still be in our offense. There's a little, bit of a, a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of a read there that would need to happen. But that's the basics of the pop cut. Let's go look at it on the court. All right, so the next piece of our screening is called a pop cut. A lot of times what will happen is this. You pass, go down, Michael will play in the middle of the screen. The defense will kind of play in the middle, so they're going to try to take away the flare. They're going to go under to take away the curl. They're going to go under to take away the flare. Then you do what's called a pop cut. So Richard, so cast the short pop cut. Okay. So what happens is, go back, go back. What happens is, is he sets the screen. Where all the screen all the sets up for a curl. This guy. Trying to take away high, take away the or curl, take away the flare, now take away the pop, and they play it high on the screen. Now we use the back cut. Come up to the top of the screen, set it up, go under the screen. Okay, Cutter sees the defender playing above. Cutter turns the screener a little bit. You may even bump them to turn them, but you're going to turn them to set almost like a back screen and cut under the screen. Okay, they're going to cut under the screen to the basket. So, here's how it's going to look. Make the pass. Okay, you're going to set the screen just like you're setting your, your curl as normal. Guy's going to come up. You're going to see that the defender is playing on top of the screen and they're going to run into him. Turn him and go back door. And again, the post would relocate as well. But that's what we're going to do. Now, with a post there, you've got to kind of figure out how to do that. And you got to almost cut more to the front of the rim on the ball side. So, you know, on the, in this case, the right side of the rim. You have to cut a little bit higher to the right side of the rim to get around that post. But that's, that's how it would look. Guard it well. I'm sure you got to guard it. So this is what it would look like in a little bit more real time. Ball gets passed. Post relocates. Okay, made pretty basic. You're going to come down. You're going to set like a flare screen. 
You're going to come off it. He's going to see that defender playing over the top. You're going to switch the shoulders. He may just brush him a little bit on the way through, but he's going to switch the shoulders. He's going to come off it to the ball and want to look there. Now, getting your post involved isn't a bad deal. Having your post maybe set a screen. Having your post see this flash up. You can do some different things there. Again, it's about teaching guys how to play out of these situations. But, again, you know, that's the basic look. So, if the guard decides to throw the ball to the wing, comes over, sets his screen. Again, the guy sees okay. And this is a great one for this. Guy sees he's playing on the top. I, you know, I can't curl it. Gonna be hard to, you know, gonna be hard to flare it. So I'm gonna back cut it. I'm gonna cut up to the top. I'm gonna change the change the angle, and I'm gonna go under it to the basket. All right. So those are the different um, areas where you would set a you would back cut off a passive screen. Let's go down and look at it on the court. All right. Our final layer comes out of screening, and it is our back cut layer. So, yeah, like we step over here. Now, Sam, I want you to go set a screen. So, Sam makes a pattern here. Give the ball. So, Sam makes a pass, he goes to set a screen, and the defense plays on top of the screen. So, play on top of the screen. Here's what's going to happen. I want you to come up and then go back behind you. Okay, so the, the offense player is going to come up, he's going to come up, and he's going to go back. All right, and just like here, just like everything else, you might go on top. We're going to switch the screen. I'm going to say back. So the last piece we're going to, one of the last pieces we're going to talk about is our zone adjustments. The beauty of this offense, doesn't matter if it's a trap, doesn't matter if it's a press, doesn't matter what the defense does, we're going to run our offense. They can play Pac-Man, they can play whatever. But we got to do a few things to adjust against a zone. All right? So the post should seal the back of the zone. He's going to play a game, and I'll show you how this works, with the back side of the zone. Pick this up. Um, if you're a Dribble Drive fan, Jerry Pettigrew out in Cuba City, Wisconsin has a great championship productions video on this. Um, also, stealing a little bit from uh, Coach Torbo in the Read and React, we use the hook and look when we run the zone offense. Now, this is not Read and React by any way, shape, or form, but we do like that piece of the, uh, of the zone offense in Read and React. The cutter finds the open spot in the zone, hooks in there, looks for the ball. So here would be the zone adjustment. So let's say it's just a basic vanilla 2-3 zone. All right, real, real basic 2-3 zone. When we make a pass, obviously the zone's going to adjust. He's going to come out. He's going to say again a little bit. He's gonna, they're going to come out. He's going to come over a little bit, and we're going to go from there. But what the cutter's going to do, so many guys just say cut. Oh, that's great. But where are you cutting to? You're cutting to defenders. It doesn't work. So we hook and look. You're going to come and I like to go behind this guy if you can. And we're going to try to sneak in to wherever the open area of the zone is and we're going to try to get the ball. You've got to make sure you, the ball can see you as well. If you go straight behind this guy, it's going to be a little hard. So you may have to go you know, this spot here. But we're going to hook and look inside the zone and we're going to try to get the ball. Now, one of the other things that I talked about was having your post player play games, all right? We're gonna play games with the guy. So if we've got a basic, basic two, three zone, all right? What this guy is gonna do is he's gonna try 
Let me make one quick change here. He is going to try to get on the inside of this plate. And he is not going to post up. We don't teach post up. He is going to box out that guy. He's going to move him backwards. All right, he's going to move him backwards. And there's a couple of reasons that happens. Number one and the most important, this guy decides to drive the gap. The middle steps up to help. It's a money dump down for a layup. Also, anybody takes a shot. Easy rebound. We've got the guy blocked out already. All right, so that's what we're looking for first. Or even if we catch him here in a hook and look, it's still an easy dump into your post mat because he's sealing off that backside. Now, they're not always going to let you do what you want to do, obviously. You're going to get a couple of those, and the coach is going to start yelling at his guy to get inside of him. And that's fine. So what you'll end up with is, you'll end up with something like this. Okay? Because they're going to want to play inside of them. They're not going to want to give up layups for too long. What we do now is we play a game. Now we turn, we box them out this way, and what does that give us? Skip pass, three-pointer, or a skip pass if our post is good, dump in for a play, right? And again, if he dumps in, he runs the Laker cut, whatever, you know, we, we run our stuff. But that now, all of a sudden, we're giving up open threes, and this guy's getting yelled at to get out there. So what's he going to do? He's going to start running to the outside. Now we've got another, you know, now we've, again, we've got inside position on him because he's trying to play the shooter. So we kind of go back and forth with this poor guy right here and really make him work. The other secret to this is screen the first, pin the second. So if this guy gets around him, this second guy here, or the, this guy starts to get a little bit quicker and run here on airtime, we're going to step in, we're going to seal that middle guy, and we're going to get an even better shot. So that's what you do with the post. Outside of that, the offense is the same. We're driving and kicking. We're passing and cutting. We may even set some flare screens. We may do some other things out of this. But we're still running the offense against the zone. We're just looking to run it, you know, a little bit differently with how we pass and cut and what we do in the post. Throughout the season, you're going to play teams that are going to want to do a lot of trapping. You're going to play that aggressive team that wants to get up and trap in a 1-3-1 one, one, or a 2-3, whatever it is. And the beauty of the offense is, once again, we just keep running our offense. It doesn't matter what you're running in the half court. We're going to run our offense. When teams trap, we just, we're just going to do what we do. And in man-to-man, -man, you got to just teach you guys to make that read. If my guy leaves, I'm cutting to the middle of the floor looking for the ball. I'm going to catch it in the middle and make a play. Pretty easy to get around once you guys understand that. Against the zone, we're just running our zone offense. We're going to hook and look. We're going to find the soft spot. We're going to get the ball in there. A lot of trapping is just teaching you guys how to play, how to handle pressure, how to catch it square up, how to make passes out of a trap. So here's what it will look like. All right, we've got – cut this piece. All right, so here's what this will look like. Let's say we've got a team playing, let's say a 1-3-1. One, one. Pretty typical trapping zone. You know, we're going to get out, we're going to deny. All right, I think your post being on the backside is huge here because it always gives you that diagonal look. So, if they come up and trap, he makes the pass across. They trap him. All right, he comes over, he gets to the backside, he comes over, he drops down. Here's what happens. We Now we run the hook and look. So he's going to try to, it might be here, if this guy comes up a little bit higher, it might be here. We're trying to find that spot. Because he goes here, it's dragging down the defense, and it's allowing this guy to get up here and be open for the pass. If we go to the corner, and I know we don't like to go to the corner, but sometimes it happens, okay? They drop this guy down, they drop, they put this guy here, it's the same thing. I'm going to hook and look, okay, and this guy's filled the back corner, sorry about that. I'm going to hook and look. If this guy comes with me, this pass becomes a wide open pass. So we just keep moving the ball until we get a hook and look, or we end up with something such as So we end up with something like this. Okay? 
We end up with a situation where he can shoot the gap, he steps up, he steps over, and we end up with the diagonal into the post. Okay? So those are the kinds of things we're looking for against some kinds of those kinds of zone traps. Just hook and look. If it's a man-to-man -man trap, okay, and you know, common thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it is. Let's say he makes the pass, they trap, this guy comes over, this guy comes up. The guy who's open's got to realize I'm open. Get to the middle of the floor. Get to the high post area, get to the middle of the floor. That's all it is. That's all the adjustment is against thumbs down, thumbs up, scramble, any of the scramble series stuff, any run and jump, whatever it would be. All right, the last thing we're gonna do on the court here is we're gonna do our zone adjustments. So, we're gonna use post to represent base to keep the zone. Go ball here. Post still stays on the backside, but what the post is going to do is the post is going to box out the backside of the zone. So, Michael, come on down. <laughs> so, if Michael
Another adjustment we can talk about is going high and wide. You can use it at the end of a game when you want to burn clock. You can use it when you want to control the tempo. Maybe you're playing a team that likes to run up and down, pressure, get after it, and you, you, know, you need to use it to slow them down. You can also use it when you're being really pressured because you're pulling that defense out, you're setting up your back cuts. Um, wings come up to the free throw line extended. The guards are a lot higher than the NBA three. Run the offense from here. It's basically a two, three high, Princeton looking set. And you also have the option to run a dribble over back cut if your team is a little bit more advanced. Then it really becomes almost Princeton like. So this is what it looks like. All right? Wings are at free throw line level, guards are really high. We're looking to work the ball up here. Now, a couple of things off this. Post player can start to really screen from here. So we make a cut, he can either come to the ball and make a basket cut, or he can go away, we can cut him off the screen, he can pop to the ball. This is great when you've got a guy, one of our um, sort of post players last year was a shooter, we can put him there. He was really great at 15, he'd set the screen flash to the ball. That way now we, they've got real problems. If we hit, get a hit on, dead hit on the screen, it's a layup. If we get a dead hit and his guy cheats, now it's an easy jump shot. So you can run some things like that out of it. I mean, it's just your basic offense. You're passing, you're cutting, you're passing, maybe setting some screens and some curl cuts. You know, maybe you're flaring out of this. You're running your offense, but we're running it high and wide so that it's harder for the defense to deny us. All right? Uh, you can pass in the post, same thing. I'm going to cut through. Maybe he dribbles over. Maybe he dribbles over at this guy. We run an action off of that. There's a lot of different things you can do out of this. But I think this is great at the end of a game. You're up 10 points with two minutes left and you want to take the air out of the ball, here you go. Because if you want to come up and pressure us, now we are going to take the air out of the ball and we're just going to back cut you for layups. So again, the 2-3 high adjustment, the high and wide adjustment is a great adjustment in a number of different situations. Somehow you've sat through this entire video, I'll give you a lot of credit. Um, but we finally made it to the conclusion. There's a couple of different things that I'd like to talk about, tap a few loose ends before we wrap it up. First of all, fitting into your personnel. Every year you're gonna have, especially if you're a high school coach or you're a middle school coach, even if you're an AAU coach, whatever, you're usually gonna have different personnel every year. Um, you gotta fit it by tweaking the layers that you emphasize. Now it doesn't mean you don't teach you know, all the layers, but what you emphasize, especially at the highest levels. So the more athletic, the more you're driving and cutting. You want to just pass and cut. You want to drive and kick because you want to move the ball side, top, side. If you're athletic, you put your post on the back side more because you want driving and cutting lanes. So you run it almost more like dribble drive with some pass and cut in there. You may curl screen sometimes, but you're really emphasizing, guys, we got to get to the rack. We got to get to the rack. We got to get to the rack. If it's not open, pass and cut. If you're less athletic, you want to screen more. All right, you're going to want to take, you know, you're going to want to move the ball, but you're going to want to set some screens to get guys open. Okay, you got great guards on the back post. Keep that post on the back side, swing the ball off it, keep that post getting away. You got a good post, you're going to have them flash more, you're going to have them hold more. All right, you've got some shooters. You're really going to want to, you still may want to dribble drive, and you're really going to want to set some pop screens, and you're really going to want your shooters to be the ones setting the screens. So that's how, kind of how you fit it to your personnel. It's about the layers you emphasize based on the team that you've got. All right, defining roles. I mean, you're going to have to tell guys how to, to be good in this offense. You might tell them, hey, look, you know what, you're really small. I want you to pass and set screens instead of cutting because you're not going to get the ball there. But I do want you, when you get the ball, to try to drive it to the basket because you're quick. You know, you might tell them, you know, you want them to cut, you want them to run the floor. How are they going to score their points? Every player you coach should know where their points are coming from. And it may be a hard conversation. You're, you know, you're not a very, you're a post player, you're not very offensively skilled. We love you on defense, but offensively you're not very skilled. You have to sit on the backside, dump downs, offensive rebounds. Hey, you know what? Guy doesn't want to hear that, but it's the truth. And it's that he knows that's my job. And I think you empower your players on their job. Okay, my job is to get to the rim and score. My job is to you know, get to the rim and score or kick out. My job is to be a spot-up shooter. But empower them in that role. You have to be the best spot-up shooter in our conference. You better be the best defending backside rebounding post in our conference. And have them take pride in that role. All right? 
And let them play know where they should be shooting from. There's some guys that, you know, just aren't shooters, and that's okay. And our mantra is, we love threes, we like threes, we love layups. We love layups because they get us the best shot in the game, which is free throws. We want free throws and layups, we want threes, and we don't want our mid-range pull-up jumpers. They're just, you don't hit them at a high rate, and they're only worth two points. So you're better off getting a lot of threes, a lot of lay even more layups, and a lot of free throws. All right? And don't use negative talk. You can't. Don't say you can't. And I know I just probably said it, but don't say you can't. Say you should. You are a backside post player. You are a spot up shooter. Now you can't drive, but we want you to be a spot up post player. That's the best way to sell these guys in the roles. All right, a couple of things. I want to thank you for listening, for taking the time to do this. Also, I want to thank St. Croix Prep players that appeared in the video. I want to thank Coach Leesner from St. Croix Prep, who has all now went and taken a college job in Wisconsin. But I, I couldn't have done it without those guys being there to help out. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. JohnCarrier42 at gmail.com. I try to get back to everybody in a day or two. If I do receive an email, it's not very often. But I try to get back to people right away. Again, I thank you for listening. I hope this makes sense. And moreover, I hope that you decide that you want to run motion and you want to run it your way. Maybe you add a layer we didn't add. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. Dribble over back cuts you could add. You could add some things out of the post as layers. Maybe you decide that, you know, these are some layers you want to add. Make this offense your own. Again, thank you for listening and good luck.